Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Fall to Rise podcast. This is episode lucky number 17. I'm really happy to be doing part two of this show. We had a great time last week. Today's episode is a follow-up of last week's episode, Bridging the Gap, African versus African-American. I'm fortunate enough to have had my guests return, uh, Nguru Maina and Zanele uh, Maina. Uh, thanks again for coming out. I'm really, really happy that you all are back. Uh, you know, it, we covered a lot of things last week. We talked about a lot of things. So welcome. Thank you very much, brother. Thank you. Thank you for, for having us. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Now, this yeah. week's going to yeah. be a little different than last week. One of the differences that we're going to do this week is we're going to open it up a lot more to the people that are watching, a lot more of the the live viewers, because we, we have a lot of questions for each other. There's a lot of misconceptions that we have. Yeah. Us as Black Americans and Africans, we're kind of like stepchildren. We're actually like siblings that were separated at birth, and we don't know our parents. So we're trying to now yeah. learn each other as siblings again, so that we can hopefully repair and reconnect that family. So I really thank you all for being intricate parts of that. Thank, thank you for you. having us. We're grateful to be a part of the show. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, before we get started, just to let everyone know, if you're new to the show, uh, there's a certain way that we do things. For one, if you have a question or comment, you can raise your hand. If you're unfamiliar with how to do that, there should be three dots on either the top or bottom of your screen. And once you press on those three dots, it should be a button there that says raise hands. Once you do that, I can see your hands. I can acknowledge you and you can ask your questions. If that doesn't work, you can type your questions in the chat. And if all else fails, you can take yourself off of mute let me know that you have a question and I'll acknowledge you and then we'll get your question uh, through. The main thing we want is to be fun, but respectful. Uh, yeah. We want to try to learn from each other. And th those are very, very big things. And that's it. <laughs> it's pretty laid back. Please have your open and honest questions because we really are trying to heal and learn from each other. You know, we're fortunate that we have, uh, I'm sorry, Nguru and Zanelli coming from Kenya. So, you know, that, that's big. We have people from an international uh, audience. We have Sai, who I don't know if he can still hear us, who's actually from Senegal, but he's uh, we got him on our side now in North America. But uh, <laughs> hey guys, yeah, good. Hey Sai, how are you? Good, good. And yeah, we are doing very well. And if if you maybe given a chance, we we would introduce ourselves like the way we do in Africa. <laughs> please, please show me how to do it. So. So my name is Nguru, the son of Maina. I'm from okay. the, yeah, I'm from uh, uh, the Kikuyu community or the Kikuyu ethnic nationality of Africa. We call, mm -hmm. we, uh, we call it Kikuyu kingdom. And from the clan of Mosera and the, line, the lineage of Gadura. Oh, I'm wow. born here in Kenya. Yeah, and I, re, I, I live in Nairobi. And here is my wife. She she will introduce herself the herself the way they do in in South Africa. Well, actually, in my country, my husband has to introduce me. But I'll take <laughs> I'll take the opportunity <laughs> to introduce myself. I am Tengetile Zanele Mpila, but now with Tanguru because of him. I come from Eswatini, which is also called Swaziland. Um, I'm a Swazi, and I'm married to a Kenyan, so I had to relocate from my country and come and live in Kenya with him. Yeah, so so I uh, we've been we've been watching a lot of videos lately, and one which captured our our view is Akon. Akon, you all know Akon, the musician from Senegal, and he talking. He he would say, he, he would say that there has been a lot of misconceptions about Africa that our brothers and sisters in America are very scared of even visiting Africa. And, mm -hmm. and with this comes the idea that this is the best time that we have to to, to, to reconnect and to rebrand Africa, like he's saying. It's time we, we rebranded Africa so that our brothers and sisters in the diaspora can, can see a, a more beautiful picture of Africa. And come yeah. back home. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah cause, cause, cause he's saying, Guys are very scared of Africa. They, they think we, we are fighting and 
they think they are wild animals everywhere. And compare, <laughs> when you compare, <laughs> when you compare that <laughs> to the, the, the Caucasians, those guys are, are like never afraid. They are always going to, uh, coming to Africa. Ready to explore. Safari yeah. and all that. Now it's time for our people to come back home. You yeah, know. so with this show, we really hope that we can be able to bridge the gap. We really hope that we we'll reach out to a lot of our brothers and sisters in the diaspora. And we are hoping that really it will not just be some talk show. It will be something that people are motivated to take the step and come back, even if it's just to visit and, you know, live for a week or a month and know where your ancestors came from. And maybe go back if you wish you, if you want to go back to the US or anywhere else in the diaspora. But we really hope it will be something that will change everything about Africa. Definitely, definitely. Thank you, thank you. Now, before we uh, move ahead, I have to thank my sponsor, uh, the Jersey Bearcats football team. Hang on one second. Uh, they're in the Arena Football League here in America. I know for some of you in Africa, you may not be familiar with American football, but that's our sport. They talk yeah. about baseball. You know, uh, football is our sport, so... I definitely want to thank my sponsor, uh, the Jersey Bearcats Football League. I actually have the owner of the Jersey Bearcats Football League, uh, Mr. Jermaine Sanders. I don't know if you want to say a couple of words, but, uh, <laughs> you know, I really want to thank you. Uh, well, James, thank you so much. Um, and, and, and thank you uh, for the moment uh, to, to, you know, just briefly advertise. Uh, it's a pleasure to be on uh, today. And, uh, I look forward to learning a little bit more about my brothers and sisters out there in the motherland. And uh, James and I had a conversation uh, a couple of days ago in reference to, you know, doing more for our brothers and sisters um, and, and investing, you know, into, into, you know, different things out that way. And uh, I would love to you know, sit down and build and, and take part in more of these uh, Zoom meetings and, and, and podcasts. Uh, you know, and just basically work on, you know, uh, a game plan, you know, to move forward and how we can, you know, develop more of the uh, relationships with our brothers and sisters over there. So um, I'm excited, you know, to learn a little bit more about you guys over there. Um, this is very interesting and very, you know, close to home uh, in terms of, you know, getting to know, you know, more of our roots and, and, and the motherland. And how we can build, you know, and change things and change the uh, the, the, the stereotypes and, and things of that nature and the negative, you know, connotations that are out there about, you know, how we we don't get along, um, you know, well with our, our fellow uh, Africans, you know, um, in the motherland. So, again, thank you for the opportunity. And, and this is a beautiful platform. And I love what James is doing and and uh, all, all the many, um, you know, uh, different concepts and different uh podcasts that he's had on here this is very fruitful information and i, I hope we can continue to build and, and and move forward so thank you again for the platform and the opportunity and uh you know i definitely would love to you know spend time with you guys and and, and talk a, a little bit about what we do as far as the jersey bearcats arena football team and uh you know how you know the united states you know in this term, you know, with, with football, um, you know, and the COVID issues and things of that nature. But uh, I would love the opportunity to kind of build overseas and, and uh, you know, give it give an opportunity to those that, you know, want to learn the game and, you know, who knows, you know, do some different things that way as well. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Jermaine, quick question. If somebody wanted information about the Jersey Bearcats football team, where can they find that information? Absolutely. Um, we're on, on, we have our website, Jersey Bearcats football, uh, uh, Jersey Bearcats football.com. Uh, actually they're, uh, preparing for a, um, an abbreviated season that we're looking to have a winter season, just, uh, five or six games. We'll have about three home games here in central Jersey. Um, and we have all walks of life and, and, and all, you know, phases of talents, um, you know, guys that have played high school ball, college ball. Some have played, you know, arena football before and others that haven't played the game, but, you know, have a passion for the sport. And we're just giving them a platform to, you know, reach that that next level. So 
We have an abbreviated season coming up in a couple weeks, and uh, we'll go full throttle. Uh, hopefully, we can get past this COVID for the, um, you know the next year, and uh, we'll be back up and you know running normally with um, a full schedule starting uh, mid March. Cool. All right. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Jermaine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, we're just going to recap what we covered on a little bit last week. We got through a lot of these misconceptions of Africa. For those of you that didn't see last week's show, uh, we have this concept of Africa that is just this poor, desolate wasteland with flies everywhere and, you know, where everyone's starving. We kind of have an idea that this is what Africa looks like all over the continent. That's what they show us on television here. We think that this is what Africans live in. This is their lifestyle. This is their world. But from speaking to Nguru and Zanele, they started to make me look more into Africa. Like, for instance, this is Africa. That's Africa. This is Africa. This is Africa. So today we're going to dispel a lot of those misconceptions that we were told about Africa and about the, what we were told about each other. So I know that I can't dispel them all by myself. And I know that uh, in Google Runs in LA, they can't dispel them all by themselves either. So if you have any questions that you have for in Google's in LA, Sai, who's here because he's representing Senegal, bring them up. You know, you can hit the hand raise feature. You can raise your hands. Uh, you can ask the question, you can make your comments, your concerns. Uh, same thing uh, with any of our people from overseas. If you have any questions, concerns, or something that you want to know about us, the floor is open. So again, if you have a question, raise your hand, type it in the chat, or uh, if all else fails, you can take yourself off mute. One, one second. Uh, Joseph Hogue. Hey, everybody. Can y'all hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, good, good, good. I got my face mask on. I'm inside of a building. But um, thank you, everybody, for, uh, you know, thanks, uh, our overseas brothers and sisters, for uh, coming. I'm good. Um, uh, for coming out. Um, I just had a quick question concerning uh, the culture. So um, one thing about oh, over here in the United States is that um, myself being a lighter skin African-American has, has seen a, a rift between lighter skin African-Americans and darker skin African Americans. Is that the same over in Africa or is it different? So, so okay, thank you. Thank you, that's a good question. So we have, we, due to influence over the years, we have that same thing. I'll call it a thing. You find that people like, like people who are lighter, compared to darker. People prefer lighter than darker, but not in most cases, because if you, if you, if you go to something like dating, people will tell you lighter skinned are more, more expensive to <laughs> take care of. And more people like are, are attracted to lighter skin girls. So you find there's that problem of even bleaching their skin. But I, I don't think it's a big, a very big deal here in the East because people who bleed their skin are, are kind of hated or they are, there's some prejudice against them. Okay. Wow, so, so wait a minute. So people that are bleaching their skin, they kind of look down upon in East Africa? Yeah, especially, yeah. especially when we see, you know, when you bleach your skin, there's a the difference mm -hmm. between your hands and your face. So we yeah. call them two colors. Like in my country or in the South, we usually call them the two-faced people, two, two, two <laughs> colored people. So oh, yeah, there's, there's dust, yeah, the yellow bone and everything. There's really those bad words that we associate them with. So most of these people are starting to hate it because of that. Otherwise, there was a time that it was very much, everybody was trying to bleach their skin because white was regarded as some beautiful, you know, girls were really trying to be, lighter skinned and everything to get men and all of that. But right now, I think the conceptions are really changing around it. Huh. All right, Joe, did that answer your question or did you have another? It, 
No, it, it did. It did. I was just wondering from the African perspective, um, where where do we think that that, that or, originated from um, over there? It's the whole white people notion that the Afghans uh, are yeah. superior. Yeah, in fact, in saying that, you find that if you, if the way we were brought up, for example, mm -hmm. you go to a mission, mission nursery school where even, even during the day, you find a white priest uh, bringing sweets to you. So you, you see, you get that conception that white, white people bring sweets, bring goodies and all that. So that, that's something that has grown over the years with, uh, with people. You find that white is like, if, if a white person comes here looking for a girlfriend, it, he will definitely, this, 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 this uh, see, a generation or a group of people who, who have this conception that if you, are, you get a white husband, you are rich. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, so white, white is, is, uh, is like people, people, people connect that with they are, they are rich, they have money, you know, mm -hmm. they bring good oh. things. Yeah. It, has, so, it is, it is, sorry, it has even escalated to the point that even clothing, like for us in my culture, when you wear some white cloth, it's like you are pure. When you wear black, oh. it's associated with death, you know, really bad luck and everything. So it has even gotten to that point where if, if, like when, when, when I lost my dad, my mom had to wear black clothes for six months. So that was some very bad um, phase in, the, in, in our family. So it's associated with that. But when it's weddings and everything, it's white, it's beautiful, it's pure, you know? I don't know if it's still because of the um, British traditions and everything that we came to that adoption of white and black clothes mean that. I don't know. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, Joe, jo, does that answer your question or was there more to it? No, no, that, that was good. Thank you. Thank you both for that. Thank you. And Sai said that it's the same thing in West Africa. That's, uh, uh yeah. I'm oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yes, we actually do have the same perception here. Um, in West Africa, is that like people are trying to differentiate. It's more a way of differentiating themselves especially for women different differentiating themselves from the rest of the um, the population in order to be different you know and to be perceived by men as okay this is something different um i want to try that uh there's also this issue of um a complex uh, of superiority exactly as uh, what wilson expl was explaining and Zanel was explaining that um, that uh, white people are associated with money and better uh, better status in society. Sorry, guys. Uh -huh. Yeah, we actually do the same thing here. Uh, you actually have a huge issue with that here in America. If you, for instance, most famous athletes or a lot of famous actors or celebrities, when the black ones, they tend to marry white women. That, that, that's a big thing, but it's also a taboo here. And now we're starting to switch where you start to have a lot of, uh, a lot of famous black women are starting to marry white men. And you know, it, it's, 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 it's almost seen as a sign of making it, which is crazy because we've been taught to hate ourselves for so long. We've been taught that we can't be beautiful by the way that we look. That's why you have a lot of women, and I, don't, I know I'm gonna get in trouble for this, uh, wearing like the wigs, the weaves, and the wigs and weaves are often not the hair of black women. It's often the hair of uh, women from other countries, white women. So, you know, yeah, we deal with the same thing here, but we call it colorism here. We used to have what was called the paper bag test. If you were darker than a paper bag, you were considered to be too dark. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, <laughs> let me see. Oh, <laughs> somebody already said trouble, trouble. <laughs> Uh, I want to give everybody a chance. So we had someone from America ask a question. So my brothers and sisters from overseas, do y'all have any questions for us? We're just going to go back and forth. No? Okay. All right, I'm just going to let everybody know the questions that you will. Sai, any questions for us? Yeah. 
No, you don't have any for us? Okay. okay. Sorry, do you have any questions for us? Uh, no, not particularly. Um, me, I have really a poor experience of the, I just moved to North America. So I really have, um, my experience here in North America is just, it's just starting and uh, I'm living with Canadians. So it's a bit different than USA, I guess. So I sure, cannot, sure. yes, yes. But if I have any questions, I'll come up definitely. Okay. All right. Well, um, I'll go to a couple of the questions that I was uh, left with last week. Oh, sorry. Sure. Just a short, uh, small question. Um, is it the, still on the color and um, white and lighter skin and darker skin? Do do you, do you guys have that when you when you when someone gives birth to a lighter skin lighter skin child, the child is received. Um, what do you? She she's beauty. She, no, she's received. You know, the family is more happy when the child is lighter skin than when the child is born darker skin. Is it? something that is normal. I'm not sure that the family is, but at times you may see that the lighter skin child is treated better. Not in every case, but in certain cases, you'll see that the lighter skin child is treated differently. The child with the whiter features is treated better. You know, for so long, we were always taught that, you know, the most beautiful people were uh, lighter skinned. Mm -hmm. So the idea of someone like Lupita Nyong'o she would have never been considered as beautiful as like a Holly Berry or a Jada Pinkett. She wouldn't yeah. have been considered as beautiful. So um, the same thing with the hair texture, with the way that we speak. You know, it, what's so crazy about us here in America is that if you speak intelligently, the belief is that you're speaking white. That is actually wow. what they say to us here. If you speak with some intelligence, they'll say to you, stop acting white, stop speaking white. So, you know, we're going to have that same mentality. So if we see people from Africa, we're going to say, there's no way that they speak it intelligently. No. If we want to learn how to speak, you got to go to Europe because that's, that's where they speak correctly. So it, it, it's, it's so unfortunate. Um, this deep-seated hatred that, we, that we've been taught, you know, something that I hear a lot of is, and I've heard this so many times, I'm not an African. They don't consider us to be a part of them. Why did they leave us here after slavery? That, that's a big, that's something I've heard a few times. You know, mm -hmm. we don't connect to them. Um, what do you all know of the American slavery experience? Like the whole experience. I think we have some information, like how you guys were taken yeah. and, you know, from yeah. what you call these places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, most of these things that we, we are taught in school, like they, they have some very little information about slavery so okay what the, they teach you a little bit of it then mm -hmm. if you want you can go searching for yourself so if okay. you ask me i do have a lot of information but if you okay. if you ask someone else they they the only thing they might know is very little they know slave trade they, they know when it happened why it happened mm -hmm. but they don't know the details of what people, you know, they, this what what people went through up to the sure. point when slavery is being abolished. They don't have that. Yeah, and you know, some some of these things have been made to 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 look like they are they are a little bit. They are not as bad as as uh, as they they should be be. They should be seen as bad. What are they telling like in school? What do they tell you about slavery? Like, do they tell you that we were just taken and that was it? And, uh, you know, yeah, we were it, it, it's very, it's, it's very shallow. And most of the information that, that you'll be receiving is the, you know, you get, uh, they start with the industrial revolution of Britain. Okay. So, so they start, so we are, we are normally taught they are, they are history. You start with the Industrial Revolution of Britain and how they started moving out of the uh, UK. They went to America, they created lands, then they started slave trade. So, so, so slave trade, because like uh, they will tell you people are kidnapped or mm -hmm. the chiefs would sell those naughty people. But I don't know. I, I normally say if we didn't write that history, it's not it's our history. 
So the, that, yeah. that's what I can remember. They will tell you people are normally kidnapped or, mm-hmm. or the, the, the naughty people, the people who are, who are like the problem to the society or are, who are sold really? by the thieves. Mm-hmm. I don't know the reality of that. But then wait, they will wait, tell wait, you... I, I didn't mean to cut you off. Wait, you said that you guys were taught that the people that were problems in Africa, those were the ones that were taken as slaves? Yeah, yeah, like like people who are wow. who, like people who are considered a problem to a certain society. They will be they will be they will be, they will be sold out by the chiefs. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know the truth in that because if I go down into our history, there are ways of if someone did a bad thing. There are ways. There were ways of punishing them, and mm-hmm. as much as we know, there were trade routes. People in Africa used to trade with people from outside for a, a many, a very many years. But mm-hmm. you find you find something like trans a trans Atlantic trade. Those those mm-hmm. some of the, the things that that are taught in school, but are, mm-hmm. are very shallow. Then, then you find in the east, like the east of Africa, people used to trade with the people from the coast, and the people from the coast used to trade with the Arabs. Okay. So there's no, there's not any place that I hear that chiefs would be selling the the the, the people who are problematic to the society for slavery. But I'm, I'm something that I'm sure of is people people who are being kidnapped. And yeah. if you go down to the history of the Congo, the Bakongo people, you will see the king, the king of the Bakongo people complaining to the king of the Portugal, telling him that I know, I know you are you are kidnapping my people. And to, to a point where the, the nephew of the king was kidnapped and taken to Brazil. So at least we know people were kidnapped. Oh. Yeah, but yeah. when it comes when it comes to history history of uh, of the slave trade, we I'm telling you we get a very little in schools because where you're supposed to mm. learn this is high school or primary school. Mm. So yeah. one of the things is um, what we were always taught is that uh, European slave traders went to Africa, kidnapped us, put us on ships, crammed us in there dropped us off to America and they had actual slave auctions. I don't know if they told you all about that. Yeah. yeah. But they had actual auctions. They split up the families. And one of the main things that they did is they made us forget our culture. That's one of the first things that they did. You forget yeah. your language, forget your culture. So the whole idea, I think that I spoke about last week of voodoo, we were taught that voodoo is this terrible thing because it was our culture. The way that you all dance, it's this evil thing because they couldn't let us have a connection to our culture. And if you, the whole idea of colorism actually starts from back in slavery because you would have some of the slave, ma- slave masters that would rape the women and in certain cases, the men, and they would give birth to these lighter skinned babies. So these lighter skinned babies, were given, they were given special treatment and they were the ones, they were the house slaves. They were the ones that were allowed to work in the house. They didn't have to work in the fields. They lived better, they ate better, they had better clothes. Uh, Every day living situations were better. So field slaves who were usually darker skin tended to hate them because their view was why they treated them better than us. And then you have the house slaves, they would look at the field slaves and say, well, I'm better than them. I'm not them, I'm more beautiful than them. So they became more desirable to us. And that mentality still carries on today. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you know that um, they used to whip us during those times with bull whips, yes. mm-hmm. and they used to lynch us. They would hang us from trees. What's so crazy is that over the past year, we've been finding a lot of black Americans hanging from trees yeah. over the past year. And they're claiming that it's suicide, but I don't know that it is. Yeah, we have that here. But people being hung from uh, trees? People hanging themselves. That's, oh, that's hanging suicide. Themselves. He, he yeah, suicide. suicide. Yeah, but I'm aware. I'm aware of uh, during during slave trade, and uh, mm-hmm. I think because I've, uh, of of uh, when I, when I, I I do my own research, I'm aware of times when people would be 
will be hanged and and uh, burnt. Like like mm. you find someone someone's son being burnt and and hanged during those times of slavery. Mm. Yeah. Oh wow. So yeah yeah so 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 I think like like you said, uh, we we had these times when your culture was stripped out your language was stripped out then they they created a a mixed race mm. which was looked up at as being of higher yeah. rank than than the black people mm -hmm. i think what they did here they tried to to divide not based on color but based they they, they would take based on how royal you are to them Mm. like like how how submissive are you to to them mm. so those people who are very much submissive to the colonials will be made chiefs and they have oh, good wow. things of land then when it comes to, then then when that's when the land was taken and people are forced now to work on their farms but when mm. you look at the chiefs the chiefs who have the land because they are the people who are controlling this whole narrative. They are like the boot leakers of the colonials. So they are, they'll be mm. the people who'll be whipping the, the common people. They'll be the people who'll be- Sellouts. Yeah, they are, they are like mm. sellouts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they are, they are the chiefs, they know everything about the community and they, they report to the colonials. So you find oh, wow. that colonialism happened because there were people who were, they were submitting to these people. And even though there were people trying to fight for their freedom, the rest of the, like these people will be selling them out. Mm. Even if you have like a hundred people trying to, to fight for independence, they, they, there is one person who's selling them out. Yeah, we, we had that here. We had uh, someone named Nat Turner, who was, uh, he actually was a slave and he got tired of it. He just started killing us, slave owners, plantation owners. And he actually led a revolution and he was sold out by another slave. And he was actually killed because they sold him out. So it's the same thing. Now, Sai, I know that Sai had something uh, that he had to add, Sai. Yes, um, I think that we have a lot of similarities between the societies in the US here and how uh, let's say, how the government is dealing with uh, black communities in the ghetto and like in like um, in hard areas and how mm -hmm. the colonial, um, the former colonial countries, how did they um, instigate divisions within our societies here in Africa? Because mm -hmm. uh, uh, even though if the as Wilson was saying, even though if like the chief or like the government or the traditional chiefs were uh, united, there's always a way of finding someone that it's impossible to have unanim unanimity in a country or in a society. You will always find someone who you can capitalize on, you know, to, uh, you know, just to use it for, for your gains. And it's called social, social engineering. So they are very good at that. So what they did oh. is that they used, uh, they used the, um, the missionaries, uh, oh. the missionaries first, when they came uh, here pretending that it was uh, for religious purposes, but in, we ended up, no, we ended up, uh, it ended up being for economic purposes. So, there's always a way of capitalizing on a small, uh, a small part of the population, you know, and it's still going mm -hmm. on right now. Huh? Mm -hmm. In every country right now, where in every country where there is a let's say a bit of nationalism, and whenever someone wants to gain, uh, was wants wants how to say to uh, raise national interest and you know to develop their country, they will always find a way of instigating a revolution, you know, or capitalizing on, you know, uh, or, or some part of the society, you know. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jim, I think that you had your mic off. I think you had a question or a comment. Hold on. Jim? Oh, hold on. Hello. 
Hey, Jim, how are you, brother? Is it your what? Hello? JB, can you hear me? I can hear you, Jim, yes. Oh, okay, my internet was messing up. Now, I just had a um, good afternoon, everyone, first of all. Good afternoon. Um, I just had uh, not so much a question, but um, Sai was definitely uh, absolutely right on that. As the old saying goes, when the white man came to our land um, on the continent of Africa, or should I say the country of Africa, they brought their Bible and they kneeled down. And when we opened our eyes, we had their Bible and they had the land. So, I mean, that's really indicative how all of this happened. You know, we definitely fell for their religion and their Bible, and we're still doing it to this day. And I know I spoke about this last time about my love for voodoo. I do not practice it, but I do understand this. It is um, one of the traditional religions of Africa. So I have no fear of it. You know, I don't really practice too much in religion, period. But if we was to be one, it would be the traditional and voodoo happens to be one. And I know, you know, a lot of us have a lot to say bad about voodoo. You know, some of us have our own um, family experiences, but whatever bad we can say, um, people were murdered in the name of voodoo or, you know, a lot of people were helped. The Haitians just happened to be able to, um, France um, came to the conclusion, it was voodoo um, that helped the Haitians kick France is behind, but we must um, keep in mind that how many millions, millions upon millions were were killed in the name of Islam, were killed in the name of Christianity. So before we, you know, defame our own traditional religion, let's keep in mind what all religions have done. Like I say, Christianity has killed millions in the name of Christianity. But also to um, piggyback on what my brother and sister was saying, um, yeah, I always had that question. We all had that question. Why didn't they come get us? I, I have learned through my studies that most of them did not know. They had no clue what had happened to us. As my brother said, they were told that we were the bad people, so they just sent us off. But we must understand that a lot of us were indentured servants, whereas Black on Black, was, we were enslaving each other. It was a different kind of slavery. Tribes would fight each other, conquer another tribe. They didn't come and enslave them and abuse them. I mean, they gave them living quarters, they fed them, but they had to work off their debt. So it was an indentured servant type thing. So this is what the Europeans told them they would be doing. They would treat us the same as indentured servants. So they had no clue what we were going into in America. No clue at all. So um, I, I guess that does answer the question. I always wonder, oh, why didn't you come get us? Most of them had no idea. And let's understand this. They were not able to come get us. Once the white man stepped foot on the soil, he did not leave them free to roam. They were colonized immediately. So even if they wanted to help us, they couldn't help us. And they still are colonized to this day. My understanding is still colonized. So, you know, I guess that resol resolves it with me, the question, why didn't you come get If they wanted to, they couldn't come get us. They yeah. are still, yeah. uh, still colonized. So I just want to add a little tidbit, my understanding of really what happened to the best of my ability. Thank you, Jim. So, so I, uh, mm -hmm. I, I would like to, that, eh? So 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 thank you thank you very much brother Jim and Absolutely. yeah so so to, to add on that so, uh, when when Christianity came to Africa it was met with a lot of resistance a lot of resistance where the, the local people because we we had our own religion like if you 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 are say on the eastern side of Africa, this, the Congo, these areas, because I, I understand, you know, you know, Islam, I believe Islam was started in Africa. I believe it's an African religion. 
because mm. those long time ago it had gone up to west west africa that, that's why you find that most of west africa is islamic because even before the white people came islam was already there and when when you come to, to our, our, our maybe say part of the south of west africa and say these areas of central and east africa now you find voodoo and we, we had our own religions african traditional religions and we we had there, there would be god there would be the 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 you know there are curses taboos there are all those things revolving around our people then we have the ancestors we 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 respect very much and they are like the people who protect us uh, they under god and protecting us guiding us sometimes they come to us they tell us what we should do how we should do it and we have seers seers actually are the people who would be able to talk to the ancestors tell you what is what is probably what that your family has not done that you're supposed to do how to come maybe how to do away with curses how to solve after someone has gone through a taboo and you want to come maybe cleanse. to cleanse them you know all those things so you find those two african religions revolved around that but inside the religion of africa we had people who were able to to uh, misuse magic I, and i think magic was like invoking invoking ancestors in a way that you can harm another person and that's why you find when christianity came everything was like put to look like it's it's that side that side of uh, magic and uh, what do you witchcraft so yeah witchcraft so everything was bundled together and put but if, if you go down and study african religion you find that these people who practiced witchcraft were hated in the community and for example in my community a, a log would be taken they would create a beehive he would be put inside and locked into it then thrown into a river to die to drown that's how they used to kill witches yeah wow. <laughs> in, in her community they used to yeah they used to witch they would burn they you would be, they, if if people have the, the, because we had our own courts if people had uh, the 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 evidence that you are practicing witchcraft you would actually be lynched and banned banned because they don't want to you because they believe that if you ban you are banning even the spirit we don't want your spirit to come back because we believe in you know like you you are named after someone so you are that someone so a kind of a reincarnation we don't want that reincarnation to happen so mm. so about our religion we i think we need to do our own research about that mm. then jim jim uh, brother jim also talked about us the question why didn't what didn't they come for us and they knew they are probably i i would say some knew some knew what was ha ha happened okay the common the local the local people may not be aware of what happened even today there are a lot of people who don't know what is happening they just wake up look for food eat sleep if they have kids they just struggle to find you know this that population which has been put there to struggle but after the abolishment of slavery in 1865 i think around that time you yes. know we, we had a, a like a little window then there was colonization mm -hmm. where these people went to berlin divided africa amongst themselves and they they said we wanted to to do international trading but what they what they did they came to loot so i think that didn't give us time to to realize what was happening then you find that now people under colonization are in a state of looking for food because you are your normal life has been cut off you had land it has been taken away now you have to feed your kids now i think and even when we started going to their schools because they came and introduced their schools i don't think they would be teaching 
what they were doing during that history. So uh, like Jim said, I, I'm, I, I'm sure most of the people didn't know and still don't know. Mm. Then oh. when you go to, because you find people who now started knowing because to, there are people who are taken to, to Europe so that they can study and come and improve Africa. People like the, the first president of Ghana, Kwame Nkrumah, and I think he, he also, he, he tried to unite Africa in a very nice way. You find people like Malcolm X now with his knowledge of what has was happening, tried, tried to unite the black America with Africa. And when, I'm see, I, when I say Libya, Algeria, Tunisia, Egypt to South, that is South Africa. And he tried his best Although we know what happened before he even made it. Marcus Gavi tried. But if we want uh, an example of someone who managed to bring, bring black people back home, uh, someone who, who managed to bring uh, the black community from outside Africa back to Africa, we have Hili Silasi. You know Hili Silasi, the first, uh, the, em the emperor of of uh, Ethiopia, you, you know, you know him. Yes. Yeah. So, so what he did, he he went to Jamaica. He he was a very bright guy, and he went to Jamaica, and he promised guys that I'm going to take you back to to Africa, and he he managed to bring a couple of people. Uh, I think a lot of uh, a big group of people to Ethiopia. He gave he gave them land in a place called Shashamani, and. If you went to Shashamani, you find people who are who are Ethiopians now because they are now the generation of the people who are brought there. But they are also they have the Jamaican culture. In fact, if you see them, they are actually they, they are actually Jamaicans. But but uh, but now they, they have the the Ethiopian citizenship. They speak Amharic. They although they still speak the some speak Jamaican patois. So if you if you need an example of people who are brought back, that, that guy did, him, and he managed to do it. So I think some people had the information and they were trying to bring our people back home. Only that there were a lot of uh, obstacles in that. Because even this guy, this guy, the Italians tried to take Ethiopia between I think 1934 and 1941 or something. Mm -hmm. They tried to take Ethiopia, Italians. And during that time, a lot of people are killed, but they, they still managed, they still managed to, uh, to fight back. And when this guy comes back, he still tries to improve Ethiopia, but in the end you find him being killed by his army. So there were a lot of obstacles in doing that. We all know, even Marcus Gavi, what happened to him? Because he, he was on yeah. the idea that our people should be brought back home. So with, with, you know, with the people waking up, that's when I think now, because people are waking up, that's why you're seeing people in Ghana trying to, 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 to popularize the return, the year of return to Africa. So I think that it's not so late, very late and it's happening. And uh, you you find you find a lot of people are coming back home. Yeah. yeah. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, definitely. A lot of I know Ludacris is uh he's gotten dual citizenship in Africa now. Uh, Akon, of course, went back to Africa. There's a lot of people that are going back uh, to Africa, which I'm, I'm I'm planning on going back to visit. You know, you already know my room. Mm -hmm. If I see a lion, I'm going back to America. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely planning to come back to visit. <laughs> Uh, now, Maurice had a question or a comment. There he is. Okay. All right. Um, first off, greetings and salutations and what's happening to everybody in the, the diaspora and anybody that's listening to us right about now. I don't know how I'm coming through the, on the mic, but I hope I'm coming in um, pretty clear. You sound great. Um, greetings, brother. Greetings. Okay, cool. Um, the common thread I hear in this conversation is simply that we have a lot of information 
and a lot of inaction that we have to start to get across. You know, we have to start making, you know, moves to understand where we are, where we've been and where we're going simply because of the fact of two things. Um, I believe it's an old African proverb that says, not to know is bad, not to wish to know is worse. And that is a, that is a place where a lot of us are in no matter where we are in the, in the, um, the globe. Here in America, out in some places in uh, Europe, in Asia, definitely some places in Africa, some places in the islands. Um, what I've heard from our friends in uh, Kenya is that a lot of things were not taught to you guys as some things are even ignored here in America. Some people know some things about slavery, but not all. Some people yeah. know some things about Africa as we've, as we've clearly um, gone over. And some people, don't, some people know and some people don't care. Some people don't know, don't wish to find out. And I believe the only way we bridge the gap and start to change things as far as blacks all over the world, Africans all over the world, is that we start to make the effort and the moves that are necessary to understand. And I'm so glad we have this podcast. I'm glad for James for setting this up. And I'm just thankful for us that are make are doing the research and then doing the, the revolting and then doing the revolution because it's something that is necessary. Thanks, Royce. For those of you that don't know, this is uh, kind of a personal thing between Royce and I. Royce and I are actually cousins. Uh, we didn't grow up in the same state. We, we grew up maybe seeing each other maybe four or five times in our entire lives. So we're going through the same thing, but on a family level. Like, we're trying to reconnect, you know, as a family. And we're, in, we're literally two, two states apart. Well, one state apart. So if that's happening here, Imagine what that's like for us over there in Africa. So, you know, Royce and I, we're making that effort. And I think that we have to make that effort with our brothers and sisters in Africa too. Definitely. Yeah. 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 So uh, for those of you that came in a little late uh, on, we, we call it black people time, but uh, I now found out it's also called African time. So now I know where it comes from because uh, Africans are always late too. <laughs> but for those of you that came in late, uh, if you have any questions or comments uh, on how to bridge this gap, or just questions that you wanted to know, you know, you can raise your hand. If you don't know how to raise your hand, you can press this three dots on your screen. Uh, if you press them, it has the option to raise your hand. If those don't work, you can type your question in the chat. And if all else fails, you can uh, take yourself off of mute and uh, let me know if you have a question. I'll acknowledge you because we really want to get the, these questions. We really we really want to have this conversation with each other. There's nothing that's too taboo because we, we need to understand each other. And if we don't ask these questions, we won't know. So we've already got somebody with their hands up now, Legend Damian Simmons. I see he's also my co-host of my other podcast, uh, The Extreme Truth. So, Ledge. Barely, you're breaking up a little bit. Yeah, a lot better. Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, I'm outside, so my apologies. Uh, good afternoon and good evening to everybody. Definitely thank you all from across the ways for coming in for these past two shows. Definitely a lot learned. Um, I'm going to switch up the topic a little bit for, for a minute. Um, I think one of the things that we both established on both shows is that a lot of content that we see video-wise from each other's countries is always like negative, bad, etc. You barely ever see the real good stuff that happens. So one of the videos that I come across a lot is basically like these violent, I don't want to call them lynchings, but it's basically I see these situations and what they read is where um, somebody's accused of, let's say, rape or molestation or, you know, etc. 
And basically what I've seen in some of these videos from Africa, other countries as well, um, is where they're pulling a the person like in the middle of the town, they're stoning them, they're caning them. In some, some instances, they were burned uh, alive, basically. Some instances, the cops were involved. So my question about that situation, right, is number one, how often, if often at all, that actually happens, uh, or if it does at all. And um, second question would be, if that does happen in those scenarios, um, what happens to the people that's involved? Like, do, are they arrested? Is it like uh, street justice, as we call it over here in the United States? Um, I was just wondering that. So thanks a lot. I appreciate it. I'm um, enjoying the show. Thank you. And that's for uh, YouTube and Google. Yeah. And Vanilla, YouTube. Yeah. Uh, I, I was trying to, to, to hear because uh, there was a lot of noise, but I, I hope I got the question right. So, sure. you know, yeah, from, from, whatever, from what we were talking about, like what, what the tradition used to treat the, the witchcraft guy, people and, and now today, you find that if a person is, is a thief, for example, someone who's a thief, or someone who is, uh, people are sure is a murderer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those people are, are, are usually lynched. Like, it usually happens like this, like when, when we know somebody murdered someone and they're taken to court, but, or maybe they've raped someone, they're taken to court and the next day they are out. So when, when they come back to the society and everybody is sure of what they have done, but whoever has, it has been done to has not gotten justice, the people take it to their own hands. So most of the times it's really from the injustices and everything. So people are angered. They're like, we cannot let this happen. We'd rather kill this person. You know, we would rather take the, the, the law into our own hands. So really it's, it's mm. mostly by that. Yeah, it's called mob justice. Yeah. People, thieves, uh, or robbers mm. and murderers, and 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 in some cases, people who are who are accused of being of of witchcraft. Yeah. And so people are aware of of what they do. Mm. People who people are people consider like they are harming each other, like they are harming mm. people in the community. Thieves, witch, witches, and murderers. In fact, if someone murdered someone and people called each other, he was immediately lynched and the people ban him. So it happens. Wow. It happens. Yeah. Like, like in my country, when it comes to witchcraft, it's a crime to call somebody a witch. Even if you're sure of whatever she's doing or he's doing, you cannot call them a, uh, a witch. So if, if I were to call you a witch and you take me to court for that, I'll be arrested. So what happens is people oh, wow. really get angered. Yeah, because we are not allowed to call you a witch and we know that you are a witch, so we'd rather kill you. That's the only way we get our justice. Wow. <laughs> well, you're taking the police out of it, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 wow. yeah it, it, it's called mob justice. Mm -hmm. Can I just ask yeah. my brother this real quick? Okay, John. Continue. Okay, brother, can, can you tell me, I, I guess the both of you, can you just explain to me, witchcraft, I guess is a derogatory term. Where did that come from? Is that European or is that an African thing um, to call someone a witch? And what does that mean exactly? Are they pr practicing a religion or what are they practicing to be called a witch? I, can, I cannot really be sure if it's, uh, a, a, a white people thing or a, an African thing because I know they have witches in even white people have their own witches but even in our society now it came about with voodoo so the people who practice the bad voodoo they, they manipulate the ancestors to help them kill a family member or to help them uh, harm or you know cause really danger to a, to a family member those are the ones who are called witches so they really work with the ancestors there are those people who will sacrifice and talk to the ancestors more often, so the ancestors know them more than some of us in the family who do not practice um, the traditional things, who do and everything. So this person is more likely to be 
listened to by the ancestors than somebody else than somebody else who doesn't sacrifice. So, for example, if 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 I practice, if I um, sacrifice for ancestors and do everything for them, and I go tell them that my husband here or my brother, because it's an it's a family thing, my brother is bad, this and this and this. Really, I would love you guys to help me to take them out. They will really help you to do that, so they will kill you. So you'll have your ancestors backing yeah. you up because you are the one that they know more in the family or they respect more because you sacrifice. So I don't know if it's traditionally African or it's a, a, a white people thing. I don't know. What I think is, uh, you, you know, this the like we we said last time, this bad voodoo and you know this the good side there. Eh? So the, this 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 a way there was a way some people used to to. I would, I, I would say use it to harm other people. And it was something which people were very scared about. In fact, for example, here in Kenya, they will tell you some communities had bad, very bad, let me say witchcraft, but they, we say Uchawi compared to the others. And even in the history of our communities, you, you will hear some chief who went for that to, 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 to make sure that he killed the other chiefs and he became like a king. So it, it's there, it's there. We, we, we may not have a, a whole uh, lot of information of how it goes, but it's there. It also goes with the sacrifices. Like if you fail to sacrifice, maybe they've told you to do this in order to be successful or anything and you fail to keep it on, uh, to keep on with the promises and everything. So they'll tell you every year you have to sacrifice a cow for them, then they will help you achieve your goals and everything. If you fail to do so, then they will kill a family member. So if my family knows that you are doing that, but now you have failed to sacrifice and we are dying because of that, we get angry at you because you shouldn't have, we, we, we usually say you shouldn't have gotten yourself into something that you won't be able to keep up with. So I think it comes from that. Well, uh, no. but let, 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 let no. me say, um, okay, sorry, go, go ahead, JP. No, go ahead, John. Go ahead. No, I, I just want to follow up on it. I know my dear sister Marlena <laughs> is wondering why I'm so stuck on voodoo. It's not that I'm stuck because I know the three major things you have to deal with to learn your people or to learn society, period, and that's religion, politics, and culture. You have to know them. If, if you don't understand that, we're yeah. completely lost. There's nothing else to talk about if you don't understand culture, religion, and politics. It was with you on that, Marlena. I'm confused um, slightly because as much as I accept voodoo, I'm not a pr practitioner of voodoo, however, I accept it because it's a um, traditional African religion. But I guess I guess what you're saying to us is that Voodoo is accepted. However, if you're using voodoo for evil, then you consider them a witch, not voodoo in its totality. Yeah, yeah that's it. It's only if exactly. they're you using it. Am I correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's that's what we're okay. saying. So I, I, Malena is is saying she's uh, scared. Eh? <laughs> it sounds scary. It should not. Really? It should not. Because because because. The, the scary part is those people who are who want to use it for the bad part. Some people will tell you that uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do this to make you rich. Or there, there are people who tell you, I come to my place and I, I, I I'll make you wealthy if you have problems with your family to make your lover come back. You know, those things, very weird things. So there are those people who you should you shouldn't because those are the people who know how to use the evil part and they 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 use it to to harm you in fact if you go there and you want to to be rich you become rich but you have some demands which you have to keep on doing you have to keep on doing some things to to keep like to to, to keep the light burning so i i, I think the best way is you practice the good one, then you you do your work. If you want to get rich, you do you you, you go the right. the hard right. work. Yeah. Right. Well, I guess yeah. that's where common sense comes into play somewhat. You have to use common sense with anything because I guess 
as you term what a witch is, there are witches in Islam and Christianity. So we should rid mm-hmm. ourselves of all witches. You know, it's also, I know, thanks, Jim. And I know Sai, I'm going to let Sai speak, but it's similar to here when people are famous. It's kind of similar to when they say you sold your soul to the devil. That's Absolutely. kind of the same thing that we have here. Yeah. It's over oh, well, this mm-hmm. person wanted to get rich, but what did they have to give up? Right. Uh, so it's, it's very, very similar. Um, yes. So th- thanks, Jim. Uh, Sai, you had something? Tim's really voodoo is, is connecting is connecting to your ancestors who are usually the ones who guide you in our traditions and so you there are, there are ways there are different ways of connecting with them so for us for example we use this traditional beer there's the slaughtering of a, a cow and then there's you know, the spilling of the blood and the beer okay. on on a crowd the cow sleep so really that is good voodoo in our traditions you're just connecting with them because we believe that our ancestors come back to us through our dreams. So there's a dream that when I dream, even right now, if I get a dream, let me let me not just say a dream, a specific dream, but there are those dreams that if I if I were to dream today and I wake up remembering the dream, I'll know what they are trying to communicate to me. So really, mm. if you if you keep on doing the sacrifices for them, they'll come back to you every night, maybe after two nights or anything like that to assist you in, any, in anything that um, you want to do or in anything that might be coming, in any dangerous thing that might be coming your way. So they'll come through your dream and tell you, don't do that. So you, mm-hmm. In fact, when it happens, you are like, oh my goodness, I think I dreamt something like that. So this is what mm-hmm. they're trying to, to communicate to me. Yeah. So really when you do, when you practice voodoo, you are keeping yourself reconnected to them. You are keeping yourself known to them and you know, really keeping that link with them. I, I think the scary part comes from wh- where we were taught about ghosts, yeah. like ghosts. <laughs> so people are afraid of ghosts because when you think about it, when you think about like a, a, a dead person, a spirit of a dead person mm. coming to you, you think about Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, yeah. that's where voodoo gets scary. Like for me, when I, if I, maybe for a week or three weeks without missing my father in my dream, it really bothers me because I feel like he's not connecting with me. So if I dream sure. any dream with him, I know we still have that touch. So it's good mm. for us in that it's not a ghost or anything you, you need to be scared of. I'm scared. Yeah. <laughs> well, my sister and brother, we have our issues here in America, believe me. For years, yeah. we have believed in the white Santa Claus as well as white Jesus. So uh, we have our issues in America as well. <laughs> some of the things that we believe in. Yeah. Got it, got it. All right, thanks, Jim. Uh, we got Sai. After Sai, we got Marlena. Or Marlena, Sai. Yes, thank you. Uh, I just, I'm just i just going to speak from the Western African perspective here. Uh, I think that, Jim, the origin of the witch term, I think that uh, there's a strong possibility that it comes from Europe because uh, the um, the European societies and cultures have a really strong uh, a really strong past about like witch hunts and all that, and I think that it came with uh, it came with col- with colonialism here in Africa. Uh, it's a possibility. Uh, after to which extent it is true, I don't know. Uh, but uh, when it comes to street justice, the the other thing when it comes to street to mob um, street justice when it comes to mob, I think that it's really related also to the area where it happens. If it, if it, if it happens in a very popular area, uh, when where you see that there's no police, the police barely comes, that there's no institutions, there's no schools, like slums and all that, like people are more likely to conduct their own justice. Huh. Okay. Wow. Thanks for that. Thanks for that. Uh, Marlena. Hey, um, good afternoon. Um, I'm just thinking like you guys are laughing, but she just, you guys just said previously when there are those who could use it for bad. So why wouldn't you be scared of any type of supernatural action that could be used against you or for something bad, I don't understand it. And then my second question is, like, if these are super, 
well, you know, I mean, just being on this earth for how long I've been, you know, I had, you know, I hadn't been educated on it. So forgive me for, you know, um, in layman's term for being ignorant. So, I mean, I just want to learn. So like, I've only been taught about the powers of God and I, you know, for anything that's spiritual, supernatural, that's done by humans, I mean, I just thought that that was God's job to do things of, you know, of that sort. So just explain it to me, you know. I thought it was just God's job to do certain things, you know, to like you are, were mentioning, you know, if someone's, uh, as far as relationship and you want to, you know, make it amends, I think you said, or make them fall in love or, I, forgive me, I forget what she said, like how she said it, but those type of actions, I didn't think that we were supposed to, you know, have a hand in. I thought, I thought those actions were, were, were things of where God, you know, it's God job. That's what I was taught. Yeah, I think I can answer that one. Thanks, Malina. So like, so like we have different pastors here in Africa who use Christianity for very wrong reasons. Like we recently had some guy die in South Africa because the pastor faked that he could raise him, what, raise him raise. from the dead. So the same way that people manipulate Christianity for their own benefit, that's the same way that some people manipulate voodoo for their own, maybe not even voodoo, witchcraft for their own benefit. So you'll find someone saying, I am, I am a, what do you call like voodoo? I'm a doctor. I'm a, I'm a traditional doctor, yet those people are the bad traditional doctors. So this is the person who comes wearing the skin of a traditional doctor, yet he's manipulating that to kill or to do bad things using his powers. You find a pastor who will claim, I have the powers from God, I can help you, you know, I can get you out from trouble, I can help you um, get rich, I can really help you to do things that you, you as Malina thinks, think that only God can help me achieve such things. So I think it's the same way, the way that anybody can manipulate anything for their own good, they will do that in any given situation, most, most, mostly because of monetary gains, gains really. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's thank you so much. That 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 makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So um, I'm gonna make a note. Hey, well, Jim, Jim, we gotta let them. Uh, we gonna let them finish up. I'll swing back around to you, Jim, because we got a couple people okay. with questions. So I'll swing back around. No you, problem. All right. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So no Marina was also mm -hmm. asked also asked about uh, how how uh, because she was taught about God having all this, all, mm -hmm. all the powers, like being a God with all the powers who can do all these things that we know. Mm -hmm. And I'll answer you, Malina, according to my, my community's religion. Like when we talk about our ancestors, we, we also, we, we say God is all powerful, but our ancestors are the protectors of the truth. Like they protect the, they are things that you know, through the years, our community had age groups. We call them age groups. And these age groups were like, like a group of people who came through the years and they were, they would, they would be the, the leaders, like the leaders of that or the community at that point. And with the help of God, they would introduce things which are considered taboos and things which are considered curses. So if there are things that they will tell you, like for example, you, you need to pay dowry when you, you are marrying a girl here, here in, in Africa. So if, if you don't, do not pay dowry for, for your wife, then you get a daughter and the daughter gets married. So the, the, your son-in-law gives you dowry. If you consume that dowry, it's it's a, it's a, you get a curse because you never paid for your wife. And it's, it's like, it's a, it's a, it's, I don't, taboo or something. So you, you should not, there are things that you are supposed to do before you, 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 mana you consume, you know, there are things which were, were considered taboos and curses. 
So if if you go through that, the ancestors are the people who would be like telling you, you have to, you have to pay, you have to pay for, for what you never paid before you consume this. If you don't pay some, some things will happen to you. So we say they are the protectors of the truth in my community. I, I hope I answered the question. So yes, they will have you. They will have some, I don't want to say they have some power to, to, do, in, to do that, but things, certain things will happen to you. Because we believe that those things came from God. So it's like the, the, the laws of God. Yes, I mean, yeah. I do believe that we, we, as he, we have certain powers when we're lined up with God. You know. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. No, thanks, Marlene. And just to clarify, um, because some people may not be familiar with this, uh, because we don't do dowries here in America at all. So can you explain what a dowry is? Because again, to us, that's like farming. Yeah. So so a dowry is is what you give to your uh, right. to your to your father when a man is marrying a, a, a woman, like when you are going. To to take a woman from the appearance to to be your wife you don't just do you don't just go and take her and now we do a wedding and all that so process the wedding process involves paying off dowry dowry is is like the material things they will ask you to to the the, the father-in-law will ask you to pay and most in most cases part of that dowry has its own significance for example, part of the dowry, some, some places you pay cattle, some places you pay goats, some places they ask you for camels, some places they will ask you for, for, for all, all, like a combination of these things. Alcohol, the traditional alcohol, is normally a part of it. It's, it, it's not all, you it's have something. to. And in some places, the, the father-in-law might decide to ask you for, 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 for maybe honey or those things. But these things depend on the community you are getting you away from. Some, for example, in my community, they will ask you exactly what the father was asked to pay for the mother of this girl. Or what the, the, that clan, like my, my clan, what the, that clan asks. If they usually ask for, for, ask for 10 cows, you pay that. If, if the father of, of the, the girl says, I paid this amount of, cut for my wife, you pay that. Yeah, so I, I, I think I've answered what dowry is. And I wanted to say that, for example, in my community, you are asked to, to take a he sheep, a, 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 she, a she goat and a she sheep. For like the first, the first dowry that you take is those two, then beer. These two represents, represent two things. So uh, the, he, the she sheep represents humility and the she goat represents like being a parent. So it's like we are, we are telling, we, we, are, we want you to be humble as well as be parents. So you be blessed with kids. So these things have their, their meaning. So nowadays people, people just go with money. And uh, I, uh, people are saying it has really affected a lot of uh, maybe African marriages because now it, it's like eroding the meaning of what uh, those items meant. Yeah. Just a heads up, in America, all the men are looking at you like you guys are crazy because over here, the men don't pay. <laughs> we just uh, say, so you know what, I'm going to go marry her. Uh, we Some men still ask for the father's permission, but you know, over here, the father pays for the wedding, and the men don't really ask. Uh, uh, so over here, the men over here are saying, wait, wait, what? You have to pay? So that's kind of <laughs> yeah. what I'm like. Do, uh, I, I think it was, it was also a very nice way of uh, ma making sure. You know, in Africa, people, marriages are respected, and divorce is not allowed. But when it, went, it, it, it came to a point where a man is really bothered and want to divorce the girl, and they call for a meeting, you go to the, the community courts and they are like, well, this girl is doing a lot of bad things and we have to allow this guy to divorce her. You could actually ask for your dowry back. Oh, all right. Yeah. 
we need to bring that back to America. <laughs> uh, uh, Joe, you had your hand up. And yeah, so I did. Uh, I'm enjoying this dialogue so far. I've been on and off camera. I was eating and I was listening, but I really appreciate this dialogue that we're having today. Um, I, I had a question for you all over over uh, to our brothers and sisters over in Africa. Um, in the United States, um, I've noticed that you know there is uh, African Americans that practice different religious beliefs, but there isn't much dialogue for understanding of those religious belief differences. A lot of the times when you're sitting down with someone who may be Christian, someone who may be uh, Muslim, uh, someone who may be of another denomination or, or no, another belief system, it's more so of, I want you to hear and understand. And I also want you to believe what I believe. Is that the same in Africa or does, th is there a dialogue where people are genuinely wanting to get an understanding of others' uh, religious beliefs? Religious. Yes. I think I, I, I think I'm 50 50 with it. It depends on mostly the level of education, I think. And then you as a person, if you are willing to learn. Um, it's, it's very difficult for me to sit a, a Christian parent and start telling them about uh, Isl Islamic religion. And, you know, even if it's not trying to convince them to change or anything. Just talking about it and you know telling them what it's all about and everything, it's it's really difficult. I, I wouldn't even start a conversation like that with my mom. So I don't know if it's really education or it's your age or what comes into play for us to really sit down and have such conversations with each other. So so I I, I want to add on that. Uh, so when when Christianity came, people at first people were forced into it. So when people got, got into Christianity, they taught, they, their kids went to school and they went to churches. So the people who, the elder ones, did not teach the, the people, the, their kids about the traditional religion. So continuing, so these people taught their kids the same things that they were taught. So you see that now this third generation is not aware of their their original religion. So what, what I can say and what I know right now is a lot of young people, a lot of youth are going back. Most of the youth right now are going back because most of them are saying Christianity was a tool of colonization. So they want to know what, what was ours because even though we are not taught a lot about uh, our religion, our African religion, Someone, someone, some white scholar battled it up and called it African religion, tradition religion. And it, it's like something brought together and now it's been taught in schools. It's been taught in uh, grade uh, that, that uh, what's, like nine. They, they teach that to some kids, students. So, so with, with that introduction, many young people are trying to find out their, their traditional religion. Hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. Thank you so for it's that. kind of a revolution. If you go to Facebook, to Twitter, and you find someone talking about Christianity, you read the comments, people will be like, no, that was a, a, a tool of uh, uh, colonization. Most of the things are not true, they'll tell you, the Bible tells us to, to stay poor, you know, it's like, so they try to, to they try to, to they, they try to like say, look at even the pastors that we have right now. They only ask us for money in exchange for some fake miracles. You see like the, the pastor she talked about, Pastor Bushiri, who, Bushiri, right? Hmm? Macau. Ma eh, mm, pastor. Macau. Lukaku, Pastor Lukaku, who, who last year was claiming that he could actually raise someone. And they faked the whole thing. They faked the whole thing, the guy waking up from a coffin. And that reminds me of when I was very young. There was a, a pastor here in Kenya who used to do that things. He would come and he would heal. He would actually, you'd see him healing uh, crippled people, 
people with, I don't know what type of diseases, they have gone to many hospitals. Mm -hmm. We came to realize that he, comes was, he comes with them. They, it's like, it was the way we talk Please. about scripting. Yeah. So, so people, after all that, people are now asking themselves, is this the, the real religion that we want to stay with it? And although a big population of Africa is there, mm -hmm. there are a lot of young people wanting to come back, looking for their originality. Yeah. I, I just had a real I quick follow-up follow question. Go ahead, Jano. I think- oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It, it, it froze up on my end, I'm sorry. I just had a real quick follow up question on that. Um, how how yeah. thirsty are, are is it, have you seen in Africa where they are thirsty for truth, not necessarily what they've been conditioned to believe? Um, I just kind of wanted to touch on that because you touched on it a little earlier. The young people are thirsty for truth. It's good. Yeah, okay. they are. In fact, in fact, you hear saying it's COVID, COVID, although COVID has really affected us. People, we, we are saying that it was a, 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 like a blessing in this case mm -hmm. because people staying in the house started waking up. Mm -hmm. Th this is the time that people are learning a lot about uh, our Africa. This is the time that you, a lot of young people will tell you what France has done to Africa. This is the time that now people are like, is this what the Western world has been doing in Africa? Now, now, if anything that happens, you see a certain leader going to you know certain country. If you, you look at the people commenting, it's like mm. th these people are stupid because we, we already know what is happening. We already know that you serve them. Mm -hmm. People have woken up, and and uh, and uh, if you look at what is happening in Africa, people people for example Nigeria people fighting for their rights, you fight Mali, you know, it's like, it's like people are now saying it's enough. Mm -hmm. People now, and, and uh, for example, you saw French trying to, to give this new deal from CFA to, to this uh, eco, eco currency in Africa. I think Sai would be, would be a very best good, uh, best to, to, to explain it. So you see, they are they are kind of being forced to 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 to, to leave this this uh, old uh, uh, this old uh, habit of robbing Africa, of looting from Africa. Yeah. Thank you both. I appreciate it. Yeah, Thank you. and and I think that's the reason you see a lot of Africans in the motherland encouraging. The, the, the unification of Africans in the diaspora and Africans in the motherland. Because we know what, the, the, these guys are actually very scared of our unification. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Joanne had a question next. And then after Joanne, it's Marlena. Yeah, it wasn't a question. It was more of a, a statement with regard to Molina's question regarding Christianity and voodoo and things like that. Um, coming from a family that has history in voodoo, because I've seen both sides in that sense and uh, given our life to Christ. And I think, I think one of the major thing that I wanted to share last time and this time too, is the fact that um, in voodoo, you see the priest and I think uh, they're alluding to that already, they keep asking for things, right? You have to give something to, to get something in return. And you have to keep making yeah. sacrifices over and over again. And if you can't keep up with it, whether good or bad, whether you call it good side of voodoo, but if you're not making the proper, you know, the necessary sacrifices to keep up with the good for what they're giving you in return, then bad things are starting happening to you. Whereas that's why my family and I, we chose Christianity. And I, I've heard some people mention as, um, mention it as the white men religion. For me, I don't see that, especially if you go back and read in the Bible, in the book of Acts, we see that it was actually Paul who brought the gospel to Europe and brought the gospel to Asia. So I don't believe it's the white men religion. But when it comes to Christianity and, and believing in Jesus, for me and my family, we see that Jesus doesn't ask for, doesn't ask us for anything in return. He doesn't ask 
us to even love him. But he said, I love you regardless of whether you love me or not. I'm good. I've already given myself to you. I've sacrificed my own self for you, for your good. Therefore, you don't have to sacrifice anything for me. And I've got you. So for me, with Christ, we've got the freedom, knowing that I get to choose Christ. I don't have to do anything for his love, for his goodness, for his mercy, for, for, for the blessing that he has for me, for the grace that he has. We don't have to do anything in return. And Christ got us. He loves us. He gave himself to us. He sacrifices to us. And so for me, I just wanted to say that as far as Marlena was saying, as far as being afraid um, and taking the, the voodoo side and because you've never heard or you weren't taught anything about voodoo, I can tell you where you are as a Christian, you are in the right place. Because anything out there, um, I don't believe in anything out there that's good for you, that's better than being a child of Christ. So that's what I wanted to say. Yeah, just to add on that, like that, that's how it was very easy for, especially where I come from, for a lot of people to abandon the traditional religion and go for Christianity because you find that a lot of families had really they were starting to lose on the livestock. For example, they would tell you to sacrifice a cow this year, next year, or maybe twice a year. So you find that by the end of the time, the day, you don't have cows remaining in your crop. So what do you do? How, how will you now communicate with your ancestors? You won't have any means of communicating to them. So it was easy for them to now say, I cannot do this anymore because really I don't even have anything to offer. And Jesus Christ is, is saying, come to me as you are. You don't, have, you don't have to come to me with sacrifices and everything. You just bring yourself and that'll be it. You'll be cleansed from anything that you have done or anything like that. So now in our traditions, we are, they are asking for this and this and it never ends. You have to keep on doing it. So it was easy for a lot of families to abandon the traditions and come to the side of Jesus Christ because of that. So yeah, I think it's very true what you're saying, sister. And... For Africans, it's, it has become a, a, a challenge to go back to the African religions because of the sacrifices that you need to keep on doing, the, um, the what do you call it, the cows, uh, the blood, the, the alcohol, because some of these things like right now, you, it's not every family that um, brews traditional alcohol. So what you do, for example, if you have to have a traditional event in my country, you have to go and outsource the alcohol. So you have to buy it from a, another family who is able to do it for you. So imagine you don't have the money to do that. What do you do? You will not continue with the event, the ceremony, because you don't have the means to do it. So I think they were like, we are done with our traditions. Let's now run to Christianity because it's at least free. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, to add on that. Uh, I, great. Well, so, so I, I think, I think, for Africa, I don't, I don't know whether people can be like entirely, entirely out of their traditional things because you still have to pay the dowry. So, so it's like you are doing two way, and that's the reason why these things are all still for like your traditional religion is in you. And you have gone to Christianity, so there's no way you can you can ignore one part, you know. And I also, I, I if you come to Kenya, if if there's something that you will see, it's posters of the 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 the, the now the other side doctors writing, like if you, this is a doctor from say Tanzania, and if you have these problems, come to me, and those are considered like a, the, the fake doctors. But I think they use now the, the evil side. What they do, so they, they'll tell you uh, some funny things, like you want to get rich, you want to, to, to get your wife back, come in, we'll help you. So once, once you, you go to them, it's something that you, keep, you have to keep on renewing, you know? But if you, if, if you follow the, the good side of our traditional religion, there's nowhere that you, you'll be required maybe to pay to get rich. You don't need that. Because if, if I were to teach you our traditional ways, our tradi including our traditional religion, you are, when you are born, for example, uh, uh, we, we, you know your relations, like the way women, when they are happy, when, we, when they, are, they are having parties, 
this the, the way they say those those relations come from like when a boy is born when when people are outside and they say it's a boy they 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 have to do that five times when it's a girl they do that four times and those things have meanings like you are born rich you are born a king you are born a prophet you are born a, 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 you know a girl will have four and a boy will have an additional one for you are born a warrior because mm -hmm. boys are the people who, who used to be warriors so if you follow that you don't have to to go through those other bad things like you can you you go and become rich because now that is evil because yeah. we believe in hard work another thing is there are things that you know were put there to avoid to avoid for example incest incest will be will lead to curses you so you have you have somewhere that you are not supposed to marry your brother you are not supposed to marry your cousin you are not supposed to maybe have sex with someone who is related to you things like dowry things like a lot of things those if if you follow those things they actually good things and the african the, the traditional spirituality is very difficult to follow compared to christianity that's why people will be like i don't want to go through that side because sometimes you are required maybe to to do something which was maybe to 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 quell a curse and you don't have that but what we we know is these things will still affect you even if you you go wherever because it's it's your ancestors calling out for it. JB, I have a quick question, brother. I, I, I got to get to you next because Marlena had her hand up before you, and then you're right after. I don't even know how to raise my hand, so <laughs> it's, it's a three dots on your screen. I'm gonna I'm gonna let Jim Jim go go ahead because I wanted to kind of change the subject. I got another kind of question. Go ahead, Jim. Okay, yeah. Jim. Okay. Yeah. Um, Sorry to linger on this so long, but I guess this helps us understand everything when you understand, like I say, politics and religion. And Joanne, I believe it's Joanne, I can't see right now. Um, I, I'm sort of confused. I'm trying to learn. Um, we can agree to disagree with a lot of things. That's okay. But I'm trying to learn. And I'm, what I'm confused at, um, do you not accept that voodoo is a traditional religion of Africa from whence we all come? And it does it not predate Christianity? And also, I'm just confused with this. Um, yes, there have been bad things that happen and sacrifices that happen with voodoo, but we can say that with Islam and Christianity mainly, I mean, with the molestation, the raping of the little boys with Christianity and Christianity is not free. That is a multi, multi-billion dollar business. And I mean, they control your life from A to Z if you choose to follow Christianity all the way. So forgive me, sis. I'm just trying to learn myself the breakdown with the traditional African religion, why you feel Christianity is much better than our traditional religion. I understand, it, um, to my understanding, Christianity was originated in Ethiopia, the Orthodox um, Christianity. So I'm just wondering, you seem to be hardcore against um, one of the true African um, spiritual systems. And I'm just wondering, we have to cancel that out when we say that bad things have happened um, in voodoo versus Christianity, horrific things have happened. Look at the continent of Africa. That's in the name of Christianity. All the murders that have taken place in the name of Christianity and the murders that are still taking place. So I don't want to disagree with any one religion. I'm trying to learn to the best of my knowledge. So anyone can answer, Joanna, in particular, please. Yeah, I think it's actually true what you're saying, brother. Like what Christian, what you're saying about Christianity being a multi-billionaire and billion industry. Uh, industry and everything. It's true because at some point when you go to church and you fail to tithe, which you have to do like every time you get money, I don't know if yes. it's month end yes. or anything like that. If you fail to do that, some pastors will go to the extreme point of telling you that nothing will go, nothing will, you know, you will see everything bad happening in your yeah, life. Yeah. They cut you. It feels like you have done this horrible thing to Jesus or to God. 
that yeah. cannot even be forgiven. So I think either or, both, or, or whatever religion we try to run to, at some point there are bad things that will happen. At some point there are good things that maybe we we'll associate with. So I think really saying this religion is this and that, it, it would not help anybody because we all have our own flaws and you know our own dirty games and everything. Everybody's trying to make money. There are people making money in Christianity yeah. and there are people yeah. making money in Buddhism. Yes. Yeah. So I think it's very true. Yeah, and, and we should not be scared. They are they are mm. they are see us to guide us in that. Like we have like we have prophets or we have pastors. We also have seers to guide us in that. And these are these are better because they they talk to through they they they, they, they communicate with the ancestors, they will tell you, they will tell you what is ailing you, what you haven't done, and what you're supposed to do. Uh, okay. And also, no. one thing I would mention is, I mean, that's a such a a big question that would require a lot more time than what we have now, especially talking about religion. And I do recognize the bad thing that's been done. Um, in the name of religion, whether you're talking about Christianity or voodoo. But let's not forget, we, we're not talking about the people who follows those system. Because as people, we tend to um, twist things and make things worse or make things bad, right? So that's, that's what it is. So we're talking about people. So a lot of people have done things in the name of religion for their own good. That doesn't mean Christianity in itself is bad. Um, just like, yeah, maybe you can say that to voodoo, but I'm talking about this, the, the power behind it with Christ behind Christianity. So let's talk about Christ instead of the Christian, because we're not supposed to really follow Christian. We're supposed to follow Christ because as Christian, we are human. We are sinners. We are fallen. Um, we do things for our own good. We do things um, being inspired by for what is power or politics or money. We, we, we tend to I'm twisting a little bit, but when, it, when we go to Christ himself, we see as Christ as good, as perfect. And that's why, that's where I want to our focus on. And when you look at voodoo, you look at the, the, the system. And I think we need to definitely, and I can do my, my own research. We talk about voodoo as um, an African um, religion. I don't know how true that is. Because when you, when you guys talk about the, the ancestors, that is not voodoo. That's something completely different. When we talk about the things that we do as tradition, that's very different than voodoo. So I think a lot of times we um, confuse voodoo with, um, with um, how do you say, it? with tradition. It's not necessarily a tradition. It's us taking the tradition and taking it for the, the wrong reason, the bad side. So in essence, what I wanted to say is let's not um, confuse Christianity with Christ and the message of Christ himself. So let's just focus on Christ and let's focus on the force behind um, the powers of voodoo versus the power of Jesus Christ. Got it. All right, now we're running, we're running low on time. So I know that Marlena had a question because we got about seven minutes left. Uh, so thanks, Joanne. Okay. Uh, Marlena. Oh, wow. This question might be a long, but okay. My question, I've been wondering like um, for a while, like, okay, what do you guys, what do you males particularly feel, okay, you say you go through all the effort and the diary and the cows and the money to get married and, you know, hopefully, you know, the love and everything is attached to it, but what do you really consider the women, like what, I don't know, like, you mean, like, you, do you think coach? women are second grade? Like, like the respect for women, like, do you have, of course, I don't think, well, I don't want to answer the question, but your views like of the woman, like with, or like for as the wife or one, like the, when you love someone, like, do you have a, a, a in your mind, like, okay, um, she's supposed to do this and this is what she's supposed to do. And she's only for this and this for support to cook and to tend to the kids. But she, does she, do you not see, oh, okay, as an equal? In certain terms, do you men see a woman can be as an equal? I mean, or are, are they always, you know, um, they're only for this or for support or what have you? But yeah. So, so uh, in in our uh, in our communities, 
dowry does not mean that you are buying the the, the wife. It doesn't mean that it's a, it's like a, a price that they have put on the wife that now you are paying. It's actually like it's either a a culture a cultural thing which no I was just meaning important. excuse me not not the diary you know so much as the diary I'm just saying if you go through the efforts of you know if the forget that part but just what do you guys consider the women like. Do you see them as equals, you know, whether you're married or not married, you know, um, just the significance of a woman, or do you just think they have a certain position um, as just to cook, clean, and take care of the kids? Or do you think that they have a voice, or do you have the respect for a woman commonly as you do a male, a, a, a man? Okay, okay, I, I do understand. So, okay. so women and men have different rules both during our traditional times and today so you find that it's it's kind of affected through the years by the by the the modernity but if i can tell you about our, the tradition in our history these roles were distinct like men would be doing this and women would be doing this but there are also other things which will be done by both men and women like for example if you if if you are working on on your land you are farmers you find women and men doing the, that together if if it's protecting the community that is men if it's uh, taking care of the kids it's both men and women so you find what what used to happen is men men who take the, the kid when he, he is five years that is a he and women will continue with the girls because now girls will have to learn the rules of the of the of what the, the roles of the women and they will grow with that coming to today now you know we have been battled up together like it's one for example one Kenya one Kenya has 42 communities which had different things so so that has really affected our our maybe our cultural our cultural ways of life but women are now considered in some places you fight women are considered like they are below men in some most of the places they are equal that's that's how it is now in my community for example the king and the mother are both on the same level. So we have a king in the leadership and uh, his mother. So they both lead the country equally. This one has their own powers and this one has their own power. So I think um, answering to those gender roles and everything, we really respect both women and men and their roles and the different roles they play in society. Because what we believe in is, for example, a man, if, he was, if our king was to lead alone, there are some sectors in, in the community where he would fail because he doesn't understand the roles. So we have his mother supporting him when, when it comes to decision making and those roles and everything, at least he has the support of a woman who understands it better than him. So we have that balance at least. Okay, thank you. Uh, maybe Marlene, I, I'm, I'm kind of going to try to at least answer it. Maybe it's because of certain traditions or certain cities, they may have those different views. I mean, even in America, we have something similar. You know, if you go to certain states, they feel that the woman's job is to not leave the home and just cook and clean. You know, we, we have, you know, we have our own sex here, our own different versions here where, you know, they bust it up. They have the women, they have to dress a certain way. They control how they dress, what they eat, when they can go out, what they can do. So I think that it may just be cultural because, you know, we have it here. You know, not to say all Mormons, but you have certain Mormons like out West and they, they believe in it. Again, not all. Um, Certain, certain, yeah. you have certain extreme versions of Christianity, certain more extreme versions of Islam. You have just certain other groups. Yeah. And uh, it yeah. sounds like Africa might have the same thing. Yeah, to add on that, if you went to the coastal communities of Kenya, you find that women, women don't actually do the hard work. And we, we normally joke and say, they, they just sit under the coconut trees and wait for the, the coconut to fall and they cook for mm. kids. <laughs> Yeah, but mm -hmm. I think it, it has it it might be influenced by the Islamic because those people have a mixed 
uh, they have for many years traded with Arabs. So I, I think I think that's it. But in African tradition, the roles were it's either together or or you can do these things together, or you it's there are those which are like cooking. Cooking would only be done by women. And you know, I said boy child would be given to men when they are four or five years because that's when they stop suckling. But now mm. from there, they are brought up by men. They move, a man and a woman never used to sleep in the same house. So, so he will go to the men's house. Mm. Well, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I know we're out of time now, but Sai, I don't know if you wanted a chance to chime in because you're coming from, the, from West Africa, so it might be slightly different. So I want to give Sai a chance to chime in before we wrap it up. I think that you guys have covered like yeah, um, all the aspect about that, like uh, from a Western African perspective and living in um, in different Western African countries, including Muslim and Christian and Christian um, countries with, Christ, with a predominantly Christian population. I haven't seen any, um, how to say, I haven't seen a categorization of uh, women uh, and men, how do you say that like, uh, that says that women are inferior to men or, or not. Um, I think that from an economic perspective, there is different opportunities when you look at it this way. Uh, in sir, um, how to put it? Um, in the way that, in the sense that women are much more responsible sometimes when it comes to uh, trading and being entrepreneurs and uh, they ended up they end up being more successful sometimes than men in countries such as Benin for instance um, and then yes so so that's uh, that's about it yeah thank you thank you huh. there's so much more that we had to cover today I mean I think that we really really covered a lot we really did there's so much more that we need to cover we haven't even worked on bridging the gap yet we're still we're still trying to figure each other's cultures out. Uh, so I, I privately messaged uh, Nguru and Zanele, and for the first time ever, we're doing a part three. So they're coming back next week. Uh, <laughs> I know we are dominating so much of your time, but yeah, they're I think coming people back. Are, people, people are more interested now in economics. I think the economic part of Africa mm. and, uh, and gender roles. Yeah, and <laughs> gender roles. <laughs> But well, I, 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 I think people, people need to know how, how Africa is, the economies, can you invest there? Yeah. How, how do people live? Do, do people still live in huts and, you know, <laughs> we need to cover that. No, they don't. <laughs> yeah. and, and with lions, they, they are those things which people are scared about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, those things are definitely, yeah, we definitely got to cover them, uh, just let everyone know. This is a house in Africa, so I'm, I want I want that house. But uh, <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna work on that. We're definitely gonna really hit home on how we can bridge this next week. We're gonna try to bring it home. Uh, I know that there were so many more questions that I just couldn't get to because we just ran out of time. Uh, but yeah, we're definitely gonna reach out. Uh, we're gonna do this again next week. Next week is gonna be at twelve o'clock. Normally on Saturdays the show is at three, but I have to be respectful of our you know our brothers and sisters overseas because you all are seven hours ahead of us which is crazy to me, but uh, so, uh, yeah, so next week we'll do a final one, we'll do a part three, and then maybe monthly or quarterly we'll do it again. Um, yeah. Now, we're going to end it, but I have one question for you all, for you two, and for anyone that's from Africa that's listening in live. Do you feel a connection between yourselves and other Africans and Black Americans? I don't feel any divide, so I wouldn't even say there's a connection or, or anything like that. To me, we okay. are just the same. Like right now, I feel like I'm talking to guys I know, guys, you know, it's not even, <laughs> it doesn't even feel like I'm talking to some white guy, you know, when it's white, it's very different, there's that misconnection. But with you guys, really, I don't even feel a misconnection that needs to be reconnected or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, About Africans and other Africans. So, so normally people are well connected in Af in africa mm -hmm. look at uh, look at me and sai we are like brothers we just mm -hmm. met on a train yeah 
actually we met in a train in Rome when he was going to shave. And uh, we became brothers from there. So how did we become husband and wife? So, <laughs> so, so <laughs> are all connected. And if you hear something <laughs> like xenophobia, xenophobia is normally externally instigated. So, so it's not Africans by Africans because you, you find that our languages, we even understand each other. We, we, you can talk, we, yeah, there are similarities in languages, in cultures, in a lot of things. So we know we are one. So, so uh, about, about African-Americans or Africans in the diaspora and us, we feel like, like, like no difference. We don't feel any difference. Okay, thank you, thank you. Sorry. Uh, for you, do you feel like, oh, sorry, let, let me finish first. Go ahead, Daniel. What's that? Um, so yes, so sorry, I was saying, um, yes, naturally, since there's more similarities in terms of culture with Africans, like we feel very connected, it flows, it flows naturally. Uh, with um, um, African Americans, I have not really, I don't see any differences for me to put it that way. In the way that, like, uh, I grew up listening to, uh, uh, to to rap songs and all. I don't know if it's a bit stereotype. It's a bit of a stereotype, but like listening to rap song, uh, watch, watching Fresh Prince and all those things, like being very interested in like uh, the uh, black uh, Afro uh, cultural uh, aspect of America. So for me, like uh, when I whenever I see them, I try to approach and I try to discuss, but I don't see any. Uh, any difference or you know any disconnection okay yeah it's when i see africans i still see my brothers and sisters i just think that the only difference that we have is our cultures i yeah. think that's that's the major thing is that i don't think that we know how to approach each other and we don't know how to understand each other we want to but we're afraid to i think because we've been taught so much bs about each other or bad things about each other so it's definitely i feel a connection because trust and believe, if I'm somewhere and there's not a lot of black people and I see one other black person or African, trust and believe, we're linked up at that point. <laughs> we're looking out for each other. So uh, yeah. I definitely feel a connection to Africa, as I, as I told you the first time that I met you. And uh, Joe, who may, may or may not still be on the call, and uh, Rob, who are also on the call, I said to them after my second episode of my show, my show was going to Africa because that's where it, it has to be there. There's a connection there. So I don't know what the connection is, but I'm going to have to go to Africa for something. This show is going to go out there. And then, you know, from us talking, a lot of the topics that I've covered in the past is the same thing that you're going through in Africa. And we think that it's so different, but it's the same. We're going through the same thing. Again, we just don't know how to address each other. But, yeah. you know, definitely. So we got to get ready for next week. Uh, before we go, uh, I know that you all have a YouTube channel and things that you can promote any way that you can, what, what's the information if people wanted to reach out to you or people wanted to follow you follow you on YouTube? Yeah, yeah, we, we do have a channel. We do have a sure. channel called By Africans for Africa. Yeah, the way, the way we appear on the screen, that name, if you look that for, if you look for that in YouTube, you find us. And what, what we just, we started it like uh, four weeks ago. We, we really, we, we want to show that side of Africa where nobody shows. We also want to, 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 to change the perspective of Africa. Yeah. Yeah, so we have this movement that we are starting very soon, which is rebranding Africa. So really we want to tell our stories. We want to create our own narrative. We don't want, we are tired of the narrative that has been created for us. So we are changing all of that and really would love everybody to join us in that. We want to get our brothers in diaspora and our brothers in Africa. We want you guys to know what is happening on the motherland and we want you guys to join us in changing all the narratives in whatever way, even if it's you relocating or you uh, visiting and seeing these things for yourself. For example, the houses that is showing you, 
because for some it, it will be like it's not real because what they have been taught and have been told about Africa, they cannot believe that there's something like that which exists on the planet, on the continent, sorry. So we really love to make a movement which will encourage you guys to come and see for yourselves and maybe make that decision to come back home. Definitely, definitely, thank you. Uh, I have a couple things to plug. If you want to see previous episodes of the show, because I know some of you, some of you may be new uh, to the show, if you go to the Fall to Rise podcast, Instagram, Facebook, and especially the YouTube channel, please like and, sub and subscribe. Uh, to that channel. I have a lot of older episodes on there. I have part one of uh, this episode of the Bridging the Gap, African versus African-American episode. I have episodes on depression, anxiety, daddy issues, uh, finance, suicide, things that are uh, molestation, things that affect us in both continents. So please feel free to like and subscribe uh, to both. They're very, very important. I would really, really appreciate it. Again, if you, it's in the, uh, it's actually in the chat. So I did place it there. And believe it or not, I know I'm super busy all the time. I actually have two shows. I have another show that I'm doing called the uh, Extreme Truth Podcast that I do on Mondays. Uh, for those of you in Africa, it may be a bit late because it's at uh, 8 p.m. our time, which I think is 3 in the morning for you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But also YouTube channel. So if you go to Extreme Truth uh, Podcast, I have another show on there as well. Uh -huh. Oh, I don't know that, that was a mouthful, but uh, definitely the, the question that I asked about uh, you wondering if you have that connection with each other. I want you to, to think about your answers and bring it back next week. Please bring your answer back. If you have any other questions, bring them back. If you have any questions about the views that we have of each other, bring them back. Write them down. Tell your friends. Tell your yeah. friends to come on. And ask. Tell your friends to give you questions if they can't make it. You know, we're going to break all these stereotypes down and then my goal next week is we're going to figure out how we build this bridge back, how we build this connection back. So I'm, I'm giving you all homework. You have a week to think about it. So de definitely, definitely. I appreciate you. Yeah. All coming uh, and, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, a number of, a number of guys uh, uh, did uh, write on the chat, the uh, interests, what they would love to know. I think we need to put that into consideration. Mm. Sure, sure. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so divide, write them down. Them the, yeah. Yeah. What'd divide you the session so that we don't get, sorry, I was saying we have, maybe we have to note them and divide the session so that we don't get carried away on one topic. For example, I think we, we sure. spent a lot of time on voodoo and we really lost it on the other topics. So I think we have yeah, to we give yeah. time for yeah, we did. We did. Yeah, I'm definitely going to, we'll, we'll kind of curry that next week uh, so that we can try to get yeah. to everyone's questions. And again, the main focus next week is bridging that gap. That's the goal, if nothing else. That's the goal, bridging that gap yeah. next week. So yeah. <laughs> uh, I definitely want to thank you all. Uh, again, please feel free to subscribe to the social media channels. Uh, you got Buy Africans for Africa. Yeah. Uh, please, please like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Please, please, please. I can't say it enough. Please like and subscribe to the YouTube channels. Uh, you can also subscribe to the Fall to Rise podcast YouTube channel. Again, there's a lot of old videos on there. There's new content. If you have any questions or comments, or if you maybe want me to cover a subject, or if you have a question and you want you want to cover it in Africa, please reach out. Please like. Please subscribe. Uh, see, that there's so much more organized than me. See, they have the link up. I, I'm going old school. I'm actually just writing it down. Uh, <laughs> uh, but. You know, definitely, please, please like and subscribe to these channels. Uh, I really want to thank my guests for coming back on again and giving me uh, so much of their time. Uh, and Guru Maina and Zanele uh, Maina, quick question. What time is it out there for y'all? 9.14. It's crazy. It's, it's 2.14 here. <laughs> <laughs> but I really want to thank you all for coming on. And I thank you all for tuning in and watching. Uh, I'll see you all next week. Thank y'all. Have a safe thank day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.